what's going on y'all boys i'm back again another video man and in today's video i'm gonna be showing y'all boys how to make your very own port scanner using only python so i know it's been a little minute since i made the video um i've been working on the vulnerability scanner and it's pushing six thousand lines of code you're not the think it's gonna even stop there in no time soon so i've been very busy with that and i've also been trying to um finish some try hack me courses and prepare to try to join the military so i've been a little busy between all that so my bad about that but um over the course of the next um couple weeks i'm gonna start dropping more videos in the meantime because I, I think i kind of came up with some ideas on what i should make a video about but until further ado let's go ahead and start the video i like to move it move it all right y'all boys just to show you a little example of what we're going to be making how it's going to look we're going to be making a port scanner that looks something like this with the port and the service and then we're going to add the status and these are the total amount of ports i found open the filter closed the thread count and the elapsed time so it's going to be something like this i'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible because i don't want to overwhelm y'all all right y'all boys so i went ahead and opened up visual studio code and or whatever ID that you use, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and open that up. And after you do that, we're gonna go ahead and import all the libraries that we need. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and import the socket library. And then we're also gonna do from concurrent.futures import import thread pool executor. And when these are the only two libraries that we need for the moment, it's real simple. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a class and we're gonna name it port scanner. We're gonna have three different methods in that class. We're gonna have a port scanner. We're gonna have the threader method, and then we're also gonna have the main method that's gonna run all the uh, module logic. And if you don't know how to use classes or it might get a little confusing, don't even worry about it. I'm gonna explain everything and keep it as simple as possible. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a class, and we're gonna name it port scanner. And I'm gonna name it, this will be a class that can perform a TCP port scan. And now we're gonna do def in it and this is basically an initializer that allows us to use a self parameter but we're not going to be using that in this program just because we don't need to and as i told you i'm gonna keep this as simple as possible so we're gonna go ahead and do define port scanner and after you do that you're gonna want to go ahead and wrap the whole logic within a try except so that way if you get an error it doesn't crash the program so we're going to do accept exception as e so basically any exception no matter what it is it could be a socket exception a thread exception you'll know what an exception is it's basically so if the program crashes from whatever library you're using that library is going to throw a specific exception for that library but if you use the exception the broad exception is going to catch whatever type of error it is no matter what type of library it's from which is why you always put it at the last so we're going to do print and I'm gonna type in exception, error, and then I'm gonna put E. And now we're gonna go over here, I'm gonna do with socket dot socket, socket dot AF underscore INET, which is our IPv4 connection. Then we're gonna do socket sock underscore stream, which is our TCP connection. We're gonna do SS. All right, so if y'all boys don't know, we're basically going inside the socket library. Inside that library, we're going in the class. And, that's, and inside that class, you have to define cert a certain parameters. Just like up here, I says in it. This is the init for this, the initializer. So we got to define the type of connection we're doing, which is IPv4. And then we got to say what type of packet we're sending, which is a TCP packet. Sock underscore stream is TCP. Sock underscore dgram is UDP. In this video, we're going to be doing a TCP connection. All right, so now that we got our connection made, we're going to go ahead and take the variable that we stored in, which is S. And we're going to do S dot set timeout to one second. And basically, if you don't know, we're basically setting the timeout to one second. So in case, let's say we're trying to reach a certain port and it doesn't respond back, we're not sitting there waiting for the connection to connect when it's never going to. It's going to drop it. That's where that comes in handy. So now we're going to do result equals s dot connect underscore exception. And we're going to store a tuple in this. So we're going to go like target and then port. And we're gonna come over here to our parameters and we're gonna put target and port over here. And so basically we're gonna pass the target through this and the port through this, and it's gonna come right in the connection. And it's gonna to try to connect to the port on that target and it's gonna store the result in here in this variable. So we're gonna go ahead and make three conditions to compare the results. So we're gonna do if result equals equals zero, which is open, we're gonna do print port 
is open we're going to do port and then we're going to come over here all right so this is how we compare the result to see whether the port is open filter or closed all right so now that we have our port scanner method made we're going to go ahead and make another method and we're going to call this one threader allowing parallel scanning all right, so now we're gonna come over here and we're gonna do, first of all, we're gonna define our ports. We're gonna make a list of ports. We're gonna do ports equals list and we're gonna do FTP data, FTP connection, SSH, telnet, SMTP, um, DNS, HTTP, POP3, IMAP. Um, what else am I missing? HTTP, we're gonna do 995 and then we're gonna do RDP and then that's it for the most part all right guys so now you're gonna want to come up here and put target and this is gonna be a parameter so now we're gonna come down here and we're gonna do with thread pool executor max underscore workers equals thread underscore account we take that up here and then we're gonna make it 500. So this is the amount of threads that we're gonna be using. We're gonna be doing 500, because I feel like 500 is a decent amount, you know? And then we're gonna store this within a parameter or within a variable, my bad. And then we're gonna also iterate through the loop before we use it. So for port and ports, executor dot submit, which is basically how we give a thread a function to use. And we're gonna do sockets, or we're gonna do, not socket, we're gonna do port scanner dot dot port scanner and I'm actually going to take this out and we're going to make the port scanner method static so that way we don't got to initialize it which I meant to do in the beginning so sorry about that and we're going to pass the target parameter and we're going to pass the port parameter so basically we now have it so we're calling upon threads 500 at a time and it's going to go through each of these and it's going to try and scan them and it's calling upon the port scanner method and it's passing the target and the port, which as you see, it's going through here. So after the scan is complete, you're gonna do an executor dot shutdown and then we're gonna do wait equals true. So basically what this does is that instead of, let's say one thread gets done scanning, it's gonna automatically go through the rest of the program and end it, it's not gonna do that. It's just gonna wait until all the threads are done and then the program is gonna move forward. So that way we don't get any errors. So now at the end, we're gonna do print port scan successfully completed and just like that now we got our port scan we're going to come down here and make our last method performing class y logic and we're going to come in here and we're going to do port scanner dot threader and we also have to make this aesthetic method I'm actually tweaking i don't know why i tell you that before my bad so now that we got both our static methods we're going to go ahead and Put target we're gonna put targets in here and then we're also gonna come up here I'm gonna make it simple we're gonna do choice equals input enter target domain now we're gonna do target equals socket dot get host by name and boom, we're also gonna strip it and we're also gonna lower it. So that way, if you put any white space, it's gonna take it out. And if you put any capitalization, it's gonna lower it. So now, let's say we put in google.com, it's gonna go inside choice. The socket library is gonna take that name and it's gonna resolve it using DNS to then give us the IPv4 and pass it to the port scanner. All right, so now I'm gonna come down here and do if underscore underscore name equals equals underscore main. And then we're gonna do port scanner dot main. And this basically allows us so that way you can only run this, you can only run this if you're in this module. So if you're in another file and you call upon this module, you can't run it. It's, I don't wanna get too far into it because I don't wanna make it sound complicated, but just know that this is gonna be something that you're gonna wanna learn later on to save you. All right, so now that we made the program, we're gonna go ahead and try to run it. We're gonna do Python, how to make port scanner.py enter domain name we're gonna do google.com oh what was i worried about ah, 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 oh God, ah, ah.
All right, guys, I made a I made a stupid mistake. So take off the parentheses because that's how you pass arguments and we're passing it through here. So that's something I forgot to take off. So my bad about that. But make sure you take off those parentheses, though. I also messed up the logic right here. So this is for closed ports and this is for filter. I seen that after I got a bunch of closed ports because you usually never get closed ports. It's always filtered. So this is for closed and this is for filter. So we're going to go ahead and run the script back up google.com and yep as you can see it's working we got filter ports and open so yeah no closed ports because you're usually never going to see closed filter it means that basically the router received it and it, it intentionally decided not to respond so basically it just dropped it or something like that if it's closed it's no response at all so this is what like 10 ports if you guys want to do an even deeper scan to find even more open ports like maybe a thousand ports or maybe you want to scan 65,535 which is the max amount of ports there could be we could do that so we're going to come back to the program and we're going to make another list or a variable and we're going to name it ports equals range one to 1024 so basically it's going to range through this and then we're going to make it so we're looping through ports with the z instead and we're going to google.com And as you can see, we just tried to scan at that. We just did a, a port scan of a thousand ports. Y'all wanna see something even cooler? Let's do, let's make another variable. Ports with two Zs equals range 1,000 to 65,535. Copy this over here. And now we're gonna try it again. So we're gonna scan 65,000 plus ports. Let's go. So as you can see, it's working. Filter, 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 filter. Three weeks later. Bro, we're not even halfway there yet. This is why threading is so important. Imagine doing this in a single fucking thread, bro. I will never in my life wait that long. Bro, because if you're doing one thread, you, like, for every one port, you're waiting one second. Because the timeout's on one second. Unless it comes back sooner than that. But at most, you're waiting one second. That's going to take way longer than it should. Through. And two minutes later, the port scan is now done. But 65,000 ports, bro, and map would have still been going by now. So, as you can see, this has potential, and you could really do whatever you want with it. You could customize it way further than this. But I'm gonna let you guys know something in a realistic situation. If you're really doing a long port scan like that, you're gonna want to have it so this does not print and this does not print. So you do not want these in there because you don't want to have it so it clogs up your screen with a bunch of stuff on there. So you would probably just do something like pass at the end and pass at this end too because you're not going to want to have a bunch of ports that aren't open just popping up because then it's going to clear up your whole screen. It's going to make it hard to decipher what to use. All right, y'all boys, that's going to be about it for today's video. Hopefully it was pretty helpful. Um, I'm going to be making a future video on how to make a website scanner, a directory scanner, and a vulnerability scanner. And I'm going to be making a video about a vulnerability scanner that I also made. So let me know if that's interesting to y'all boys. Make sure y'all subscribe, drop a like, follow me on Instagram for more updates on my projects, join the Discord, connect with me on LinkedIn all that until next time see y'all boys later let me know if you guys want to see those next videos though peace